Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is Torching Lam. I am a 17-year-old computer vision and scientific computing enthusiast from Hong Kong. Today I'll be sharing about learning and using Julia from the perspective of a student who has less experience than, say, a data scientist who is transitioning to Julia. Through my sharing, I hope to convey the message that Julia is easy and intuitive to learn, yet fast and powerful to use. I will also go over the, the workflow of my project, CoronaNet, which I implemented in both Julia and Python. I picked up Julia during Google Code in 2019, where I was drawn to Julia by its speed, syntax, and community. In GCI, I was introduced to machine learning and SciML libraries such as Flux, Neural Net Differential Equations, which I'll touch on today. In GCI, I did some benchmarking of Flux versus PyTorch and TensorFlow using benchmarktools.jl and found that Flux was consistently orders of magnitude faster and less memory intensive than the other two. Apart from its robustness, I also enjoyed the high degree of customization ability of Flux, where by incorporating structs and multiple dispatch, you could build custom implementations of things like skip connections. Apart from being great for research, Flux is also very forgiving to students and beginners. With Flux, a built-in image classifier, a simple reinforcement learning program, as well as two differential equation simulation programs, which incorporated neural net differential equations. Neural net differential equations was another exciting library to explore. In particular, it was amazing to see how tightly integrated the packages of ordinary differential equations, neural net differential equations, and flux were. Coming from PyTorch, there was nothing remotely similar that allowed me to just pass a custom deep neural network model to a pre-written solver and for it all to just work. In GCI, under the guidance of Chris Rikakis and Kirill Zubov, I wrote the simulation program for the Lotka-Volterra equations, which are first-order nonlinear coupled differential equations. As you can see, it is incredibly easy to define even a custom deep CNN with a flux chain model and pass this into the ODE solver. This really amazed me and piqued my interest in solving differential equations with neural networks, which are pursuing my NVIDIA internship. Beyond GCI, I have also utilized Flux and Julia extensively, such as in my project CoronaNet. CoronaNet was started in early March, inspired by doctors in Wuhan who were fighting so hard to contain the virus. CoronaNet is a three-part system for the binary classification binary segmentation and multi-class segmentation of COVID-19. With binary classification, I aim to predict from one chest axial CT scan slice whether or not a person has the coronavirus. With binary segmentation, I localize all pixels infected with COVID-19 symptoms. And with multi-class segmentation, I differentiate between ground glass, consolidation, and pleural effusion symptoms for each pixel. I used the COVID-19 CT segmentation dataset a free open access chest axial CT dataset by medicalsegmentation.com, available here. To compensate for the limited dataset size, I did elastic transformations to simulate the natural deformations of human biological tissue, random cropping for shift invariance, random rotations for rotational invariance, and normalization for gray value invariance. I implemented this project in both Julia and Python, and here's a comparison of how it went. For image augmentation, in Python I used augmentations. In Julia I used augmenter.jl. For machine learning, in Python I used PyTorch, and in Julia I used Flux. For general image processing, in Python I used scikit-image and matplotlib. In Julia I used images. One key difference between the two experiences was that Python does not automatically support mathematical data types like tensors and matrices, so I relied heavily on NumPy structures completely unsupported in vanilla Python, whereas Julia is much more friendly for more maths-oriented projects. To delve into the neural network architecture of CoronaNet in segmentation, I utilize the UNet architecture. UNet is an application of the fully convolutional network, which is an encoder-decoder model with largely symmetrical contracting and expansive halves. In FCNs, as opposed to learning convolutional function, we learn a convolutional filter through upsampling and downsampling, such that no additional mechanisms like class activation mapping are required to obtain an image mask. FCNs also draw from prior insights of skip connections of ResNets 
and lateral top-down hierarchical feature map connections of the feature pyramid networks. UNET leverages the FCN structure to achieve SOTA performance in ISBI challenges and is ideal for biomedical imaging. In terms of implementation, here is my code. Although I did have quite a bit of trouble initially adapting to using structs to implement the custom connections and bottlenecks of UNET, and with some debugging issues um, relating to GPUs, with a VIX help I did just manage. As you can see, I made extensive use of structs to construct the up upsampling and downsampling paths of UNET. So with a side-by-side -side comparison of Flux and PyTorch code, I think that Flux is just as intuitive, if not more so, than PyTorch. It removes the need for a forward function, which is a slightly confusing feature in PyTorch, as its contents tend to overlap a bit with that of the, the init function. Both libraries offer commonly used operations, such as 2D convolution, max pooling, dropout, etc., and are comparable in terms of functionality. After rigorous experimentation, I achieved an accuracy of 93.89% in binary classification, 79.65% in binary segmentation, and 61.6% in multi-class segmentation. For segmentation, I followed the convention and utilized evaluation metrics of dice loss and round loss. As you can see, multi-class segmentation was the most challenging task, and its accuracy was severely constrained by the limited data I had access to. In terms of future development for CoronaNet, I hope to incorporate attention mechanisms and dilation unit in segmentation for a more sophisticated architecture. I will also train this model on more CT scan data, which has since been made available by researchers. I will also explore the feasibility of a weekly supervised segmentation method using global average pooling and object region mining, which can bypass the manual labor cost of the fine-grained um, annotations required in supervised segmentation. To wrap up my presentation, I would like to say a big thank you to all my mentors in Google Coding, whom I pestered with so many questions. And in particular to Chris and Kirill, who helped me so much with debugging my prototype of the second order ODE solver for neural net differential equations. I consider myself immensely lucky to be part of the Julia community and have been trying to spread the word in my local Hong Kong community by speaking about Julia at conferences such as the Hong Kong Open Source Conference. I hope that through this talk, I've helped to draw some fellow students to Julia, and I look forward to using Julia even more in my future projects. Thank you.